deck today, guys. Welcome, good to see you. My name's Sarah, if I don't know you, hey. We've got a little bit of fun to do today. Uh, we did a fantasy football season and we have these really awesome trophies to give out. So we're just gonna do that really quick. Um, Kevin Winkler won one of our trophies, so you can come up and get this. Congratulations. This gets to sit in his house all year long. You guys are jealous, right? Yeah, awesome. Two times. And Two then, times. Yeah. If you are coveting that right now, be sure that you join us for fantasy football next season, and that could be yours. <laughs> this is our other trophy, and Val actually won this. She's not here today, but Erin's going to take it to her, and she gets to keep this one on her mantle all year. It's a lot of fun. Um, today we're also doing a Super Bowl party at St. Scholastica. If you guys want to join us, that's totally cool. Check out our website. It has all the directions and the info on there for what to do, what to bring, and all of that stuff. And now I'm just going to turn it over to Tim. All right, thanks, Sarah. Hi, my name's Tim, and I want to welcome you as well. Uh, thank you for coming this morning. In just a bit, we're going to continue with our time of generosity through our uh, uh, time of offering. And I want to let you know, if you're new here or a guest and you don't consider at this point uh, engage your church home, this is, there's no obligation for that. But this, this is for the people that are, are part of Engage. So I don't want you to feel an obligation there if God leads you to do that. Great. So we're going we're gonna to have that in just a bit. I mentioned earlier these cards. I want to point those out to you again. It's really, really important if you guys would, if you've not filled these out. It's kind of our way of being able to know who's here and be able to kind of keep track of that. Josh loves to get a hold of you if you're new and just say hi and welcome you and find out if you have any questions. He's not going to hound you. And also prayer requests. We use these for prayer requests. And I want to let you guys know, we take that very seriously. This goes to the, to the leadership team every Monday morning, and we're all praying through those prayer requests. So if you put anything on here, you can be assured that we're going to be praying for you for that. And then also on the back side of that, we kind of use it for our next steps. If, if at, throughout some point, uh, God is kind of speaking to you and, and you're wanting to take a next step in your uh, step towards or with Christ, uh, fill that out. Let us know. We want to pray. We want to celebrate with you and, uh, and that type of thing. So go ahead if, at any point that you're kind of feeling like you're wanting to take a next step in that. Um, I also want to talk about back at our welcome table. You guys, if you've been here for a while, you've heard about our upcoming trip to Haiti, where there's a few of us that are going to be going to Haiti in a couple of weeks now. It's just amazing how that's come so quickly. Um, and uh, uh, last fall, we had kind of a, a drive for school supplies, and I want to thank you for those of you that gave to that, because we were able, this past week, a number of us got together and started filling the suitcases, and we had a tremendous amount of stuff. Thank you for that. But we ended up with a couple of suitcases that don't have anything in yet. And we want to make sure when we go over there that we take that opportunity to bring over uh, uh, what we have available to do that. So what we're looking for right now, in the back table, there's one of these um, uh, sheets if you're at all interested. And it's kind of a, a time-sensitive thing because next Sunday is the last Sunday we'll be able to collect because we're leaving then the following Friday on that. So if you want to help out and contribute to anything going to Haiti, you can pick this up. And as well, um, a lot of the things that we're wanting, one of the things specifically is toothbrushes and toothpaste. We want to be able to do some uh, toothbrush clinics over there with some of the kids. And we've found that we can, uh, we can purchase that on Amazon at a really good deal. So if, if you'd rather just put some money, you can just put that in the suitcase today and we'll use that to purchase the, uh, uh, the toothpaste and toothbrush uh, combo kits that we can give to them. So uh, please help us out with that. So we're going to continue uh, now with our time of offering. And I want to welcome those of you that have joined us on, uh, on Facebook Live. Uh, during our time of offering, you will also have an opportunity to give if you so feel. Sarah's going to put a link on, uh, on Facebook Live, and you can click on that and be able to give through the website. So thank you for that. Let's go ahead and pray for the offering. Heavenly Father, just thank you for this morning. I just ask, Lord, your blessing on the people that are here and the people that are watching us on Facebook Live this morning. 
Uh, I just ask, Lord, that you would just speak to them and meet them where they are this morning. We pray for our service. We pray for Pastor Josh as he's about to uh, give us his mess- the message that you've laid on his heart. Lord, we just ask that you would speak through him. And then as well, now as we uh, take our offering, Lord, I just ask that you would use that to further the, the work that's being done in Duluth and the Northland. Lord, we love you. We pray this all in your name. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. How are you guys doing this morning? All right. Well, welcome everybody on Facebook. You don't have to adjust your cameras. I am wearing a lion's suit coat today. Just wanted to see what it'd feel like if they were actually in the Super Bowl, which they were nowhere near. Um, and also, our dryer's broken. This is all I could find to wear. So, there you go. That's what we're doing. But no, uh, welcome everybody here this morning. It's just awesome to have you guys here. Um, you know, as I, I, I kind of have a routine on Sunday mornings. It's really weird, but I wake up at like 4 o'clock, actually like quarter to 4, and I just get ready for the day because we come in here, the room's empty, we set all this stuff up, and, and uh, if I don't prepare in the morning, it just kind of seems like a, you're, you're on stage here like right away and you don't have any time to kind of process, right? And so this morning I was just, you know, uh, I was just doing what every, uh, you know, pastor, God-fearing pastor would be doing. I was cruising YouTube at like 4 in the morning. And uh, there was all this, like, you know, uh, things about the Super Bowl up and things like that. And it just got me kind of thinking, no, nothing profound or anything like that. But, you know, I'm going to go later tonight, and I'm going to take my family, I'm going to take my kids, and we're going to, I promise you, I will eat more barbecue little hot dogs than anybody in here. That's, like, one of my goals. I'm just going to have a blast watching the game. But this morning, the most important thing, not just this morning, but in my life, is Christ and worshiping Him and proclaiming His name. And so you guys are a part of something so much bigger, uh, and later we get to go be entertained. So let's just, let's just pray for a moment. Let's kind of put all of our uh, anticipation for that aside. Let's put our, 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 our you know, week that we had that I'm sure some of us in here, how many in here, let's just raise hands, why not? Who had just a horrible week this week? Yeah, I was like kind of okay, 50%, whatever. And then all the others that didn't raise your hands, you're probably lying because, you know, life's, hu- life's tough and things like that. But let's just pray and like just get our, get our perspective of where we're at and who we're worshiping this morning. Lord, we love you. And, and we just recognize, I mean, thank you so much for just a, what a sunny day outside. And yeah, it's negative whatever it is up here in Minnesota, but we just see your fingerprint all over this place. We realize that you're a creator, you're a provider. You're the great I am, you're the alpha, the omega, the beginning, the end. You're it, God. And yet you choose to pursue us. You choose to have a, a desire for us. And you sent your only son to die on the cross, Jesus. And we are just here to worship you. We want to learn from you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for technology so that people that couldn't be with us today are able to, to hear your word this morning uh, at their homes or wherever they may be. You're just an awesome God. We give you the glory and this is your day. Amen. All right, so we're in a, we're in a series called Be an Overcomer, and, and we're just talking about overcoming some things. Like, uh, you guys uh, are going to, we're, we're going to talk about overcoming fear. Next week, it's going to be about labels, a- and today is a little bit, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you this, there's some people in here who, this is not the most profound message that I've, I've ever preached, I can tell you that, um, but there's some people in here that are really, I, I really believe that this message is going to change them. I really believe that it's something that they need to hear. And, and it's also potentially going to step on a little bit of toes. So I'm just kind of, I know, welcome to church, right? Everybody, you know, I start off offending everybody with the lion's jacket. And now I'm telling you, like, God's word's just going to get at you today. But the reason I say that is because 
when we're in this series, we're talking about overcoming fear, being an overcomer of fear, you know, being an overcomer of labels. Last week, it was a being an overcomer of comparison. But today, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit different than that because there's an epidemic in our culture. There's an epidemic in our culture of empathy. Empathy. And, and we're going to be talking about coming, overcoming apathy. You know, I'm a part of this empathetic generation. It's this lack of interest, lack of passion, lack of concern kind of mentality. Okay? And that's where we're, you know, let's just get it out there on the table. If we're just going to step on toes, let's just do it right away, right? So there it is. And I'm a part of this as well. In fact, the reason that this actually became on my heart is because it was something that I dealt with, is I'm a, I'm a big news guy. I'm telling you, on paper, guys, I'm 36 years old, but on paper, I'm like 87 or something like that. I'm a bird watcher, an oatmeal eater. I read the newspaper. It's weird, but that's just who I am, right? And, and so I, I'm, I'm reading through uh, the news. I'm not going to say which one because I'll really get in trouble here. But I just start to see stories like, like we always read in the news, right? Like, you know, a, a puppy dies, and it's like, oh, okay, you move on to the next one, car crash, robbery, uh, someone gets murdered, this, that, and the other thing, right? And then I have this week not too long ago where some people that I knew, just multiple people died in one week. They weren't uh, exactly like really close friends. Some were family. I had three uncles die in one week. It was just bizarre. Um, I had some friends that I grew up with that died of an overdose, a suicide, somebody got murdered. It was just weird. A very weird week. But where I found myself was when I would hear these things, I'd be very concerned. When I would read these things, I'd be concerned. I might even stop and I might pray for a minute. But then that lasted like three minutes and, you know, like a bird flies by the window. And I just kind of go about my day and I almost forget about all of that. Now, I'm not saying that that makes me a bad person or, or any of you that that may happen to. But it's just unbelievable how, how we can be so uh, unconcerned with things around us so fast. You know, things that are just so important. And, and this really uh, inspired this message today of this, this apathetic generation. And I know when we say that, it, it sounds offensive. But I promise you, today we're going to learn some things. And it's going to help us move forward and look more like Jesus. And that's the purpose here today. So... To kind of start out talking about this lack of interest, lack of passion, you know, lack of concern, empathetic generation, I really want to tell you guys, uh, uh, just kind of paraphrase a little bit of a story, then we'll read some. But there was this expert of the law in Scripture, okay? So this guy, he knew what was going on. The, the law wasn't so much, it, it, was, it was basically biblical law, right? This guy knew what was going on, and he meets Jesus. This is back in Jesus' time. And this expert of the law, he's kind of, you know, he kind of has this apathetic idea. Like, he wants to do as little as possible to be in the kingdom of God. And so he asked Jesus, he's like, what, you know, what must I do? Uh, what's, the, what's the least? What's the absolute least I can do and still, you know, make it into heaven and have eternal life, this, all this good stuff? And Jesus says, which I love, uh, that Jesus always does this. He always comes back like a good parent or something with a question, right? It's never like the answer. He's just going to ask you a question. And so Jesus just says, what does the law say? In other words, it's like, you already know what you're asking me. You're just trying to be kind of uh, lazy in this situation here, you know. And, and, and then Jesus says, you know, love God and love your neighbor. And, and so the, the, the religious leader, you know, the, the religious expert, he tries to kind of justify himself. And, and so he says, well, he, he goes on and he asks, you, know, who's my neighbor? Who's my neighbor? Who do I have to love? Who do I have to care about? You know, he just kind of takes it even a step further. And I got to just imagine that Jesus is kind of shaking his head like, really? Like, really? Like, you, you kind of don't get this right now? And, and so Jesus, once again, he, he's, he's never just point blank, you know? Like, he kind of gives you this illustration or he asks you a question. Because most of the times we really do kind of know the right answer inside of us. If we would just listen to that. And here, and here it is. And so Jesus says this parable. He's talking... Uh, to this expert in the law, and he says, I'll tell it to you like this. There's a man, and he was, he was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho, and two bandits show up, you know, robbers, they, they find him, and he must have been wearing nice shoes or whatever that might look like, and, and he got beat up. 
he got beat up real bad and they just left him there for dead. And, and, and this is where the story took place. So then there's something that happened, and this is what I'm going to read that's also up here in Luke 10, 30 and 31. It says this, so there's a man beaten, he's left for dead, he's on the side of the road, kind of in a ditch, you can imagine. It says this, and a priest happened to be going down the same road. And when he saw the man, he passed by the other side. In other words, it's like, ooh, I see that, I, I'm going to stay this direction. So to a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by the other side. So you have these two people that are, that are totally avoiding this man in the ditch. I mean, this is just one of the most powerful illustrations of apathy that, that I can just even give, at least that I could find, in the Bible. It's just so powerful because it's kind of, it kind of goes back to, to where we're at in our culture sometimes. And I'm not saying that anybody here is going to see somebody on the side of the road and, and walk around. And that's not necessarily what I mean. But, but it's that not my problem, right? Like, ah, it's just not my problem. I'm, I'm kind of late for work. I had, a, I had a coffee meeting set up and I really need to get to that. Somebody else will take care of this person. You know, I, I, it's not really worth my effort. The risk is too much. I mean, I don't know where that guy's been or who he's been talking to or, or what he's involved in. And it's just too much to risk. I got things to do, so I'll just pass on by. What an illustration there. The epidemic of apathy in our culture. See, I, some would say that we have a, a, um, an empathetic generation. I, I would just put it even simpler than that. And by the way, I'm saying this to myself as well. But I would say we're the generation of, meh. It's about the easiest way I can say it is, you know, what are you passionate about? Meh. What do you dream about? Meh. What's your take on marriage? Meh. I mean, I could go on and on and on, right? It's the, the generation of meh. That's going to be all over social media this week, I think, anyhow. But, so the question that we have to ask ourselves when we see this is, then why don't we care like Jesus calls us to care? Not why don't we care like Jesus cares. Boy, that's a tall order. But why don't we care like Jesus calls us to care? And I just jotted down three things. I mean, we could, we could go through a lot of things, but just really quick here. Um, I would say that one of them is the volume of information is overwhelming. It is just, I mean, really, it's overwhelming. You, you pull out your phone right now, and you, you know, if there's, you know, you're seeing like there's an earthquake in Nepal. You're seeing that there's, you know, a uh, uh, cat fell into a hole. You know, somebody's putting up their favorite dessert from last night. Um, there's, there's a GoFundMe because somebody has like a disease or a cancer or, you know, like something that's extremely important and, and it's posted on your friend's page or, or whatever. You get a text message. Um, it's just like the, you can't care about it all. There's, there's so much to care about. So why don't we care like Jesus calls us to care? Because the information is just like information overload. That's one of the, the hurdles we run into in our generation, in this culture, with, with all the technology that we have. Another thing that I, that I put down here is that we feel helpless to make change. This is where a lot of us stay. It's a scary spot to say, but why don't, we, why don't we care like Jesus calls us to care? Well, one is because the information is so much, but the other is that, that we just we feel helpless to make a, a change. It's, it's, a, it's, it's overwhelming. It's, it's hard to care um, a lot about something that you don't really know much about. You know, it's, it's, a, it's this feeling like, well, man, there's, there's you know, like when I, when I go to Haiti, I, I went to Haiti my first time last year, and I'll tell you what, there's nobody that can prepare you for something like that, honestly. Like we had meetings and, and all that, in my heart anyhow, and I'm just looking around and it's like you want to you wanna just help everybody there, you know, you want to be the difference. And, and the reality of it is, is that yes, you, by, by you playing a part and continuing to create awareness, but the, the problem is so over my head or over, my, you know, what my and my wife could give or what we could serve or do. It's, it's just you feel helpless, so it locks you up and you stop. So why, why don't we care like Jesus calls us to? The information is overwhelming. Some of us just feel like we just feel helpless to make a change. Like little old me, uh, I, can't, I can't be a part of anything. What could I really do, right? And then here's a, here's a big one that I wrote down, and this is kind of where, where I think a lot of us live, and we don't even recognize that we live here. 
um, I'm really not going to make too many friends today. I can just tell. That's, you know, it's just one of those Sundays. But um, we're blessed and cursed with comfort. We're blessed and we are cursed with comfort. Well, well, how do I mean? I mean, we live in a generation that we can, if I want a pizza right now, I mean, if, if I would have been thinking about this, I would have timed it because I could really use some pizza after uh, service here. But we could just go on an app to Domino's and we can have a pizza delivered right here, right up here to the front of this stage. I mean, just boom, just like that. Like, it's just a, a comfortable way to, to live. Uh, one of my new favorite toys that I have, well, it's new for me, is that I have Alexa, and when I'm alone in the office, I'm never alone, because Alexa likes to talk, and it's like, hey, Alexa, how am I feeling today? You know, well, based on your current week, you're feeling pretty good. Like, she's just, she's always there, playing the music I like, and she even knows, like, on your, and your Amazon ordering what your favorite things are, and, and what you'd prefer. And then Amazon Prime, man, they deliver stuff in, like, two days now. Enough waiting for shoes for three days, we get them in two days. It's just right there. We're cursed and we're blessed with comfort. I mean, we can binge, binge watch Netflix. Any, any show that's on there, I mean, sometimes you've got to cruise over to Hulu and how inconvenient is that? That you've got to take 13 seconds to go to another you know, software to, to watch your favorite show. It's ridiculous. If I want The Office, I want all seasons on Netflix, I don't want to jump over to Hulu too, right? This is just, this is where we live. And then darn it if the Wi-Fi is slow, that happens out by us. And you got that little buffering thing. It's like the end of the world. Like my kids throw tantrums. When things are buffering, look out for me because I'm like, you know, 45% for the last five minutes. It's buffering, 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 buffering. You know, then you're super excited when it gets on. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one here. I, I probably am. But these are the things. Like it's, it's funny to think about, but, but the reality is this. There's a, there's a small truth in this. For most of us, and in most situations, it's not all, but there's kind of a principle here, is that when life, the more life gets comfortable, the easier it is to stop caring. The more life is like really comfortable, the, the more life really becomes about me and my comfort and, and, and what I want. So that's why I say we're cursed and we're blessed with it because comfort is a good thing. I mean, if you've worked hard and you've put, put time in and, and now you have a nice, you know, comfy bed to lay in and stuff, like enjoy that thing, right? Enjoy that. But when it becomes all about you, that's a scary spot to be. And so we have to overcome this. We have to overcome empathy in this empathetic generation. And this is really how we do. Now, this is kind of wordy, but stay with me because I'm going to v- explain it here. But the way that we overcome this uh, empathy inside of us, this, this apathetic generation, is that we consistently expose yourself to something that creates a righteous discomfort. I know that that was a lot right there. We consistently expose ourselves to something that creates a righteous discomfort. discomfort. The reason that I say consistently is because if there's a lack of consistency, there's a lack of interest. If you don't keep going back to something, if you don't keep going back to, to God's word, if you don't keep going back to God's word, then there's just, a, there's just this like empathetic, like, ah, I mean, you know, it'll come off my shelf during Christmas time, and like maybe if my kid wants to hear about Noah's Ark or like whatever, but there's not, there's not this righteous discomfort that if I don't have this in me, I don't have what I need for the day. I don't have what I need for the week. This is, this is the bread of life. This is where, this is where I get power and, and joy and, and comfort and encouragement. Encouragement. So when we're not consistent in this, I'll just use this for an illustration. When we're not consistently going to this, then we have lack of interest. And that's why I often say that many things, many things in our spiritual life, they have to be a discipline before they become a joy. Because we have to start budgeting in time to get into the Word. Now, I'm not talking about if you don't, you know, everybody always thinks it's got to be an hour, or this week you got to spend 40 hours in your Word. Read a verse, Read a verse. I mean, there is power in this thing. This is, this is, there's so much in here. There's so much life. John says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This book is alive. It brings life. It's not something to look at apathetically and just not care about. It's something that, that brings power and knowledge and wisdom so that we can discern in life and we can make choices and we can climb the ladder out of our depression and climb the ladder out of our anger and our past hurts 
and we can be healed. That is an awesome thing. So we, lack of consistency, there's a lack of interest. So we want to be, be cons- constantly, sorry, we want to just be very constant in exposing ourselves to something that creates a righteous discomfort. What do I mean by that? I know that doesn't sound like pa- Pastor Josh Lingle, but that is what I came up with this week. So there it is. So the, the righteous discomfort, what do I mean by that? Well, you know, uh, we... We want to put ourselves around some things that moves God's heart. We want to put ourselves in some areas and around things that we know moves God's heart. It's like, what breaks God's heart? Well, I can tell you one way is you can get to know that by, yes, coming to a service like this, continuing to be you know, consistent in a grow group. But the best way to know that is to get into your word and start reading through the Gospels and see where, where Jesus' heart broke for people. His heart breaks for you. He wants you, he wants to pursue you. And so, so you, you wrap yourself around this. And what I mean by being, you know, consistently um, exposing herself to something that creates a righteous discomfort, let me put it to you this way. I'll just go back on the Haiti thing. I'm leaving in a, in a couple weeks for it, so it's on my mind. Go with me. But last year, I will tell you, there's, there's a few of you in here that were, were probably here the day that I got back. I got back on a Saturday and I preached Sunday morning. Never again will I do that because I became the biggest crybaby up here And I mean, and I'm cool with crying, but this was like gasping for air, can't even talk kind of thing because all the, all the emotions kind of hit me all at once and it was just a a bizarre experience. But I remember when I was in Haiti and I can still remember uh, the faces of these little kids rubbing their bellies because they're hungry and you're looking at them and you're thinking of your kids who, who never do that. Um, Well, they do that, but they're not actually hungry like these kids and you're seeing people that live in, you know, literally like lean-tos made out of like a tarp and just things that are just, I can't believe it. And you're seeing things like that. And so your mind, you come back, you're like, I'm never going to be the same. Life is not what it was about for me before. And you come back and you're ready to, you know, I'm going to tell everybody about it. Everybody at Engage is just going to like change the way they spend, the way they eat, how they pray. It's just going to be great. All the, you know, and, and you're just ready to take on life for these people. But then a week goes on and another week and whatever. And, and it becomes like, you know, you get a flat tire. And now you're, you're griping because, you know, how inconvenient because you needed to be into town at a certain time. And, and you know, the, the new Jordans got scuffed. Yeah. You know, you, you break a nail, your hair does never parts right. That's a big issue with me. I can never get it parted right. But you just start to be inconsistent with where your compassion is and where your heart is. And that's what I mean by finding this, this, righteous, this righteous discomfort. Be, be, be fiercely righteously uncomfortable. And how you find that is you find out where where God's heart breaks, and God's heart breaks for people. But, but I want to read you this part because we'll go on to that here in just a little bit more because there's a story of a man, and how to illustrate that is by me not stumbling over my words up here, but to actually read you scripture. There's a man named Paul in the Bible, Apostle Paul. And this man, he, would do, he, he was uh, very well known in his day. He was connected well with the higher-ups. And his whole deal was... He, had, he, he just wanted to kill Christians, and he did. He put them in prison. He, he wanted to destroy the church, and that's what he did. That was his life. I mean, think about, he was battling God. So you're all about reaching these people and bringing them towards you, God. I'm going to destroy that, and I'm going to come in and destroy them. I mean, what a battle to get into. Right? This guy's battling God. And then this, this is where I just, I love this. This is what I love about Jesus, because he changes the people that you just never think would be changed. That is like the funnest part of following Jesus in my part is when I see somebody that just thinks like they're so far gone or they're, they're so bitter or they're so broken or their wounds are so deep and then God just says, well, I love you anyway. And you start to see these people change and it's just like an awesome, awesome thing. And that's what happened to Paul. He's, he's on this road and God has this encounter with him. He has a moment with God. And God just flat out is like, listen, what you're doing is against me, and I got a problem with this, and now I'm going to talk to you. And, and Paul completely changes his life, almost in an instant. And so from persecuting 
and killing Christians, Paul takes himself, and, and this is where he's at. This is him talking in, in Romans 9, 1 and 2. It says, With Christ as my witness, I speak with utter truthfulness. Man, I love this. My conscience and the Holy Spirit confirm it. My heart is filled with bitter sorrow and unending grief. Or in other words, a righteous discomfort. I have this I have this thing in me, I got this burden, I'm uncomfortable, but it's for a good, positive thing. I'm unending grief. I mean, anybody ever had an unending grief for something? Listen to this. For my people, my Jewish brothers and sisters, I would be willing to be forever cursed, cut off from Christ, if that would save them. What a complete turnaround from this empathetic, like, I don't care, I don't have a concern for them. In fact, I just want to put them in danger, I want to hurt them, I want to destroy God's church. And then he just gets totally rocked, totally changed from the inside out. And he says, I, I know that God is so good, and I care so deeply. My, my burden, my, my righteous uncomfort is for you people, these Jewish people, my people. It's so deep, it's so strong that I'd be willing to go without just so you could have. Wow. That's life change. That's life change that only God can do. Man. Man. Paul would tell us in that, he would say, you know, when you care, there was a time when I didn't care, there was a time when I was empathetic, I didn't really get concerned, I wasn't really all in, I just kind of coasted along and I was just, you know, nothing really worried me, it was kind of, I was the mm kind of guy, right, meh. But he's like, but when you care, when God gets a hold of you, when he changes your life from this inside out, you can't do nothing. You have to do something and you're willing to give whatever that takes, when you constantly expose yourself to something that creates a righteous discomfort. Now, I don't know what that is with you, but I can tell you just a couple ways of how you can help to get here, because that's all I can really hope to do here today, <laughs> is help you along. Number one way is, is, well, I don't know if this is number one, but a way to challenge your passion, to stir that up, to get that kindled, to get that fire going, to, to create that, that righteous discomfort in you like Paul had, would be number one is you got to stay focused. You got to focus. See, many things will catch your attention. Many things will catch your attention, but few things will capture your heart. There's a whole lot of things out there that'll grab your attention. Just turn on the TV, your computer, your smartphone, car driving by behind me right here. But there's really few things that will capture your heart. See, some of you, you, you have different righteous burdens than I do. You have different than people sitting next to you. And this is where I love the church being the church. This is just awesome how this works because some of you, you have this burden. There's an actual burden in you. Not, not just this like, I don't like the idea of it, but for the unborn. You have this burden for the unborn. Some of you, you have this burden about racial injustice. And if nobody's going to step up and do something, I got to step up and do something. I love that. Get uncomfortable righteously dig into that some of you it's human trafficking man i tell you what i i love football it's it's just something that's a part of me and the saddest thing about today is that whole human trafficking thing and i don't mean to put like a big damper on it but it's just like be praying for that you know there's this it's just a sad deal the stuff we enjoy the enemy just tries to suck out and kill and make disgusting and perverted and it, it breaks my heart some of us have a passion for clean water Right? I mean, just things like this. Cancer research, because maybe you've had it or somebody that you care about. Um, I love it. I got, a, I got an email from somebody in our congregation. I just absolutely love this. They have this big heart for foster care and adoption. And, and I love that. They're, they have this burden. Some of it's student ministries. Other it's overseas missions. Tim and Cindy can talk to you about that. Huge heart for overseas missions, just missions in general. Mental illness is some of your burdens. Uh, freedom from pornography, that's a huge one. It's, it's, weighing, it's not even just men. It's men and women. It's destroying families and relationships and, and our culture. It's destroying things. Freedom from porn, some of that is, some, some people have that for their burden. Freedom from alcohol and drugs addiction. And here's the thing, when we hear all that, it gets all overwhelming. And, and it's just like me reading through the news, you know, it's like, man, this is just, there's too much. What, what can we actually do? 
But here's my suggestion to you is many things will catch your attention. Few things will capture your heart. And I would say dig in to that burden. Dig in like Paul did to that, that righteous uncomfortableness and hold on to that. And rather than making a little difference in many places, make a big difference in a few or one place. Grab a hold of it and go for it. God wants to use you. And another bit of encouragement here this morning is don't feel like you have to start something. That's not what I'm trying to say. In fact, one of the things that engage church, the the local church, our, our bread and butter, is to partner with people that are already doing something. What we're here to do is start a local church where people can become free, we can, we can disciple people and, and help people follow Jesus and connect in relationship because we confess to God for forgiveness, we confess to one another for healing, and it's important to make friends. It's a huge part of our spiritual walk is just connecting with each other. Did you know that? We always want to dive into like these, these deep spiritual things. Well, a major spiritual thing is just getting to know one another and starting to care for one another. Don't feel like you have to start something. Maybe there's something that you can join. There's lots of addiction things in town here. There's, there's some things that we do here. There's, there's foster care. There's all that stuff. Join it. That's what I'm saying. So get this burden. Get this burden. And maybe just do a big difference in a few things or even one thing. See, Jesus was focused. Everything that he talked about was, I came that they may have life. I didn't come for the righteous, but for the sinner. I set the captives free to, to seek and save the lost. I mean, he was consistent through and through about what his righteous burden was, what his righteous discomfort was. It was for you and me. He was focused on that time and time again. Anytime you pick this up, it points to two things. The character of God and how great he is. And how broken we are, but that there's a way that through not even earning it, not even doing anything right, there's nothing that you deserve about it, but that we can have freedom in Jesus. That's because he has a burden for you, and he has a burden for me. There's nothing apathetic about the way that Jesus loves us. Nothing. See, empathy, empathy finds an excuse, and passion finds a way. And I would just say that I would rather hurt, right? I would rather hurt. Like Paul says this, you know, he embraces what hurts right here. He says, my heart fills with bitter, sorry, and unending grief, right? It's just this, uh, this, this sorrow that I have. It, it just, my heart is filled with bitter. Like this is hard for me every day because I just see broken people hurting. This is what Paul's saying. And, and so some of us would say that it's easier not to care it's easier not to care because that's a big burden. It's easier not to care and, and better not to get involved because then I can just pretend like something's not there. We can lack interest in it. But I would say that I would rather hurt with a purpose than to exist without one. I would just, I'd rather hurt with a purpose than to exist without one. And my purpose here is this local church. It really is. It's, it's, it's my burden is that I grew up in a church, and not a church, but I grew up in churches, and this is no fault to my parents or, or anything, but it was just the generation. I grew up in a church that made it all about rules, and you had to look right, and you certainly couldn't wear a lion's coat on Sunday morning or else, you know, smite it or something. But it was, you had to talk right, you had to be right. It, it was something that I could never live up to. I mean, the, the first thought of the day sometimes is, why is my dog laying there and I want to boot him in the head or something like that, right? Like, I'm ornery sometimes in the morning. And so to the standards that I grew up in church, I could never measure up. I was lost before I got found. I was, it was just over before it got started. That's how I felt, and so I ran. I ran. I lived into this, this life of, well, I know that there's a God, but if that's what it means to be a Christian, a follower of him, I just don't want to be a part of it. I want to be happy in life. The problem is, when we're, when we're trying to find an external uh, satisfying thing for an internal need, it'll never work out. God designed us to have this internal need filled by Jesus. There's no other way around it. We look for it in many, many places. I did for a few years myself. More than a few years. But I grew up in this church that that's what it was about, and it pushed me away. And so my desire is to see people come to Christ because that's where life change happens. 
That's where life change happens. And so what we do at Engage, man, I love it. I love when I get in conversations of why people ask me, well, why do you do that? And why is this person maybe, you know, holding the door or playing on stage? Because we embrace everybody. Because Jesus said that he came for all. His burden is for everybody. You don't have to measure up to something here. You don't need to prove something to me. What I would say is, is find this righteous uncomfortableness and figure that out. Follow Jesus and do what he's asking you to do. And guess what we're going to be in that? We're going to create atmospheres for you to grow and learn and get plugged in and start to be able to see what this all means, ask questions, build friendships. And ultimately, that's what we've been seeing the last couple of years that we've been here is life change happening through that. It's not about this like pressure and this legalism and this fundamental. That makes me want to just, oh, I don't want to be a part of that. I don't want to wake up on Sunday morning for something like that. I want to be a part of something that's alive, fruitful, God's moving in, working in the hearts of us, and we're growing in. And we get there, we get there by really having our passion lead the way. We stop making excuses, we put empathy aside, and we start moving forward. So here's my challenge for you guys this week. We're gonna gonna do communion here in a minute, and I'm gonna say what that's all about. You don't have to take part in that, but but we're gonna do that, so I'm gonna kind of close up here, but then stick around for a minute, okay? (laughs) Um, So my challenge to you guys is that I want you guys to pray this week, or think, or consider, however you are. Maybe you're not in a spot where you really, you know God, you really know if you even want to know God, but just have this thought. And just, what is your burden? And if you are a believer, what I would ask you to start doing is pray that God would bless you with a burden. You hear what I'm saying? Bless you with a burden. Because... I would rather hurt with a purpose than exist without one. Ask him. I know that's kind of a weird thing to give you this burden. You don't think about like that being a blessing, but it is. And my challenge is that you would would figure out what that is. You know, Moses, his burden was, let my people go. They were all enslaved. And he just would not quit. I mean, he was going to the Pharaoh. He, He risked his life. He did all these things. David, you know, he... He um, just wanted to be this leader, and he saw the people needed a leader, and da- the Goliath, this big giant's like calling him out, and he's just like, who are you to come against this enemy and these armies? And he steps up, but his burden was so strong for these people to have a great leader that this little shepherd boy steps up with a sling and stone and knocks down a giant. Nehemiah, we just uh, read about these things and talked about these things. That's kind of what uh, uh, got our year off and going. Is Nehemiah just saw this overwhelming thing, but his hometown was crushed and destroyed and, and the economy was broken. He says, I have to do something. God's calling me to something. And so he goes and he does. That was his burden. Jesus just saw people, sheep without a shepherd. And he just wanted to gather. He just wants to love you. He's not here to bring wrath on you. He's not here to judge you. He wants to embrace you. If you would only accept him, he wants to join you in life. He wants to join you in life. I would rather hurt with a purpose than exist without one. Let's pray. Lord, we love you today. And you had some strong things for us today. Because they're real. And I think each and every one of us in some way, shape, or form deal with empathy in our life. And we don't want to be labeled that apathetic generation. We want to be a passionate generation for your name. Sometimes, Lord, it's just hard to know exactly what to pray, but here it goes with the best of what I have is I just pray for these people here. I pray that we would just get over the lies and the deception that that following you or seeking you out means something weird in our life has to happen or... or, um, Or that we're part of something that, you know, we're not sure if everybody around us will approve of and and, and what do they believe and what's my role. We just understand it's about opening our hearts up to you because you love us. It's that simple. You just want to come in. You want to show us grace. And yeah, there's things in our life that you're going to show us and will change because your love is so great. 
And when we understand that grace, it just takes us down different paths. It gives us a new passion. And so for the ones here today that need to hear that and need to know that, Lord, I just pray that you make that real in their hearts right now. Sheer grace, that they just feel at peace and like, man, (laughs) what have I been running from? And that they would just welcome you in. Thank you for working in their lives and their hearts even right now. And for us that we have, we've just kind of been empathetic this past year and maybe our life and if it's towards your word, towards prayer, towards our spouses, towards whatever, work, help us see that, Lord. And I pray, this is a scary prayer, but Lord, I pray that you give us the blessing of a burden in each and every one of our hearts, that you would just stir it up in us. Show us what our burden is and and show us that we don't have to be all over many things, but if we can just have a burden for one or two things and focus on that with passion, then we have our purpose. We have our purpose. Change us, Lord. We want to see this local church change, these people change and growing closer to you. We want to see our attitudes change. We we ultimately want to see this city changed for you and your name's sake. What could happen when a group of people really grab onto you and seek you and get passion for the burden that you're giving them? We thank you for who you are, Jesus. We pray this in your name. Amen. So here's how we do communion here. Um, everybody's welcome. You don't have to go through a special class or anything like that here. That's not what we do. All that we would ask is that you just take a minute, and if you're going to take communion, this is a time where we remember Jesus in our lives. We remember what he's done for us, the sacrifices that he's made, the compassion that he has on us. And, and you would just get right for a minute. Maybe there's something that you just need to confess to him or just have a moment, but just get your heart in the right spot. And you don't have to participate. Nobody's going to, you know, look at you, judge you, anything like that. Be comfortable here. You're among friends here. That's fine. But the way that we'll do that is um, we'll just kind of go with these rows. The first rows will will come up and you kind of come to the center and then just, you know, go back out, uh, back to your seats, kind of in an orderly fashion, if you will. We'll take communion together and then we'll be gone today. So um, you guys could start coming up, if you will.